Hello, and uh, welcome to this new episode of Seattle Leadership Life Middle East. Today, our guest is Mai Alloways, Chief Data and Innovation Officer of Golf Bank. Hello, Mai. Very nice to have you today with us. Thank you, Andrea. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. Uh, May you have been at the Golf Bank uh, for more than a year already, first as Chief uh, Data and now Chief Data and Innovation Officer. What brought you to starting this project? Well, you know, I, my journey in Gulf Bank has been almost two years actually now. So yes, as you said, the first year was uh, really, I was the first generation data officer in Gulf Bank, meaning I started the data office from scratch, um, you know, to, to banking data was always there, but it was never an actual practice or an actual separate unit in an office. Um, because as financial organizations and, and everyone around the world realize how data is not just something that we save in databases, data is something that we can monetize, we can bring uh, a lot of data-driven innovations out of. So that's why there's this kind of new change where data has become a, a separate unit, a separate team, and there is a, a chief data officer taking care of, of data and make sure that we bring value with data. And as I mentioned, you know, well, when you have good data, when you start the data practice, then you realize there's a lot of innovations that come out of data. You know, data will tell you how to monetize, how to bring new value, and hence the innovation part has come along. And um, what challenges did you face in such a new role? One of the major challenges that we face as, as, as you know, in, in running a data office is that a lot of people expect you to do their insights for them or, you know, you're a data office, uh, you have a bunch of analysts and data scientists, and you're expected to handle data for, uh, or handle insights. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, not just reporting, there's more than just reporting, it's the insights, it's the um, action-driven uh, analytics that we, we, we bring. But the way I see it is it cannot just happen from one unit. You cannot be cooking for the whole bank. Um, there has to be empowered business analysts in every unit. And that switch, honestly, takes a lot of um, challenge when you're trying to change the way things are done and make sure that the business are not just expecting insights and analytics from you, they're actually empowered to self-serve with analytics. Um, when they think of self-serving with analytics, um, there's a twofold. There's some people who see it as empowering, and yay, we can do our analytics now. But there is a, a bigger portion where they say, oh, that's more work for me to do now. And I don't know, I'm not a data person. Why am I supposed to do this? Um, and this is kind of one of the biggest challenges that we have to overcome. And, and, and God, when we did overcome it in Eagle Bank by building special program, what we call kind of the data ambassadors program, where we actually build our own internal analysts and made sure that the business are empowered to self-serve but not just by giving them the access or the responsibility, but also by giving them the tools and the knowledge as well. Actually, now that you mentioned this, how do you become a data ambassador? So in, in the beginning of it was honestly the data ambassadors, what we wanted to empower business analysts to self-serve. Now, uh, to be honest with you, we the goal was to have one out of 10 employees in every department to be a data ambassador and to make sure that when they need something with data, when they make a decision, there's somebody in their team who can actually bring them the, that, the, the data to take that data-driven decision. Um, so at the beginning, I thought, we'll, let's start with 40 or 50 ambassadors um, and then grow that ambassador network in the bank. So I literally went to the business leaders in our in our bank and said, you know, we need you to nominate people, but these people would be kind of the data experts that are embedded in your unit. I'm not going to get people from my team to go there. No, you lend me some people for a few weeks. We will make them data ambassadors. And, you know, that's when they go back to their business team, they can actually do those insights. So out of the expected 50, we got 150. <laughs> so it was a bit overwhelming in the beginning. But I think it was part of people said, well, now I'm going to be empowered um, and I will be able to look at more. I will be able not to wait for people to send me insights. I'll dig them myself. Um, and that's where we started kind of the program. And it was a, kind of a we treated it as a training 
curriculum and we had kind of a five session. We had a little bit of a kind of a theoretical knowledge around data quality. We had hands-on workshop around, you know, making sure that we have the right data quality because without data quality, there's no good insight. And then there was some kind of lab workshops where they actually worked on tools such as Tableau or other data visualization tools that they can actually dig with the insights. Um, a lot of it was, let's start some projects and then let them go and, and fly on their own. So it took, the first rollout of the program took about six months between kind of onboarding to training to starting some pilots with them. And uh, right now we run the first, second batch of data ambassadors because, you know, as, as time goes by, the, there are ambassadors who get promoted and leave their analyst role. We have new people joining the bank. Um, you know, some, some, some business just need more people to do the insights. So we, are, we run the second batch of our data ambassadors and uh, we're looking at their graduation in a few weeks. Wow. Many congratulations. That's uh, really amazing. Thank you. Uh, May, what are the biggest uh, data management challenges in the banking industry. Um, in your opinion, what is your biggest responsibility? <laughs> so I think that, that, you know, when it comes to, to data management, um, a lot of what, uh, one of the biggest challenges we have to deal with is, is data quality. You know, data quality, because without the right data quality, you cannot really bring value to any business. Um, that's why one of the main things after running the Data Ambassadors program, the next big initiative that we had, I said, we got to build a data literacy program. And that data literacy program has to go to every single person in the bank. So what we've done, um, you know, to battle that right away is fine. Now we have some people trying to crunch insight, but if the data doesn't stay on top high quality, then I'm not making any money out of that data. I'm not really analyzing the right data. Uh, for our kind of data literacy program, we built kind of a workshop, a workshop that is not just general enough for everybody in the back, but it has to be personalized to the department. So when we're giving the workshop to Treasury Department, for example, we're really talking about specific within Treasury and deals and everything. When I'm talking about the same data literacy workshop to branches that I'm really bringing examples around, you know, cash transactions or, or certain monetary things that happen or, or cash de deposits. So what we've done, we've done a rollout for every single employee has to do this data quality workshop. And it took us about four months because we had to do those workshops in person. There's a bit of a kind of a, um, a lecture part and then there is a kind of a workshop -y part. But then at the end of those, a series of workshops, everybody in the bank was on board. And it was from juniors all the way to senior and top management. Everybody had to learn that they had a role to play with data and that our data quality as a bank, our you know, insights really depends on the person who's entering any basic interview. Um, it's a challenge that a lot of organizations face. You know, if you look at the literature out there, uh, data quality is one of the dangerous things that, you know, organizations face because absolutely many are becoming data driven but without the right data quality you're really driving in the wrong way and um, you know one of the biggest responsibilities that comes with that is really building the awareness is that we're keep we're teaching a lot of people about how to deal with data why is every single field in the form important why is the quality why if i'm taking an application from andrea to open an account why is her address important to me you know, we're not going to give her a visit to her house, you know, but we need this information to help build certain models or, you know, think about our next location or, or delivery or things like this. So there's a lot of things that we depend on that people sometimes don't think they're important, but that's building the awareness is one of the most important um, responsibilities because data is not for techies, data is for everyone in the bank, everybody touches data. And that's where we think, you know, there's a big responsibility on the data office to build that awareness and to keep it always um, top of mind. I think everyone will agree with you right now. Uh, May, could you share some thoughts about Goldsvan digital transformation process over the recent years? How did these changes uh, help improve your business performance uh, the last year, almost two years ago since you joined the company? Yeah, so one of the things that, you know, we keep, and, and, and like you said, it's a transformation. Transformation doesn't take overnight. Um, transformation doesn't take just installing a few tools and using them. I always tell them that with transformation, we always work with people first and then data. 
a lot of the data that changes by transformation is really a cultural transformation because few things that we used to see before is, you know, people wait until the end of month for reports, you know, and to me, these reports are uh, somewhat uh, outdated because at the end of the month, sometimes decisions have already been taken. Um, so what we're, you know, teaching business analysts to do is, is to be able to look mid-month and mid-week and be able to have some kind of dashboard that they continuously look and reassess their decisions before waiting until the end of month to decide whether to do something or to stop it. So there is that data-driven decisions and, and that knowledge has, you know, many folds. First, you got to teach the analyst to build the right insights. And then you got to teach the manager to actually take those into to account when making any decisions. Um, so these these kind of automations are, are paying off slowly as we see a change in culture that people mm-hmm. do ask about numbers before making decisions, that people want to look at the numbers mid-month, mid-week, not wait until the end of month to re-change the solution. And that helps with the optimization of our resources, with our budgets and everything that we're not really, you know, shooting in the dark. If we have data, then data can help us see the way. Uh, talking about the budget, what are your areas of investment for this year and the next one? Um, so you things that, you know, every probably every bank is looking at is, you know, uh, looking at AI and looking at, you know, very much customer experience personalization through data. And that's one of the things that we do heavily with the, with the innovation office is that, you know, our my innovation team works closely, closely with the data team because they look for insights, they look for numbers to help them take the right decision on how should we design this, um, who should we target. Uh, all of these personalization questions, um, they have to be data-driven as well. And then when we analyze customer insights, then we can personalize um, using their data. So in a way, I'm showing you, Andrea, for example, the things that you need based on the behavior that you've shown me. Um, and that's where personalization has it's become, you know, you get a personalized customer experience. And that's the goal that we aim to uh, this year and next year. Besides of the Intit Data and Innovation Officer of Gulf Bank, you are also a board member of the Digital Analytics Association. Uh, could you tell us more about uh, this association? Sure. So with the Digital uh, Analytics Association, uh, it's a uh, kind of international association head- headquartered in, in Chicago, United States. Um, it's a nonprofit organization, and it's for building a better world with data. Um, so uh, we connect a lot of digital analysts. Um, we connect a lot of people from data, but we're focusing mainly on the digital aspect of analytics and, and, and data science. Um, we do have a lot of corporate members, individual members, student members, And the idea is, you know, when you're working in a field like data and tech, it's very important to bring those people together, whether, you know, virtually or in person and everything. But making that network, making that pack gives a lot of the knowledge, a lot of sharing, cross-sharing of experience. And that's what the organization is aimed for, to bring those professionals together, to make those networks, um, to come up with certain kind of competency frameworks. We do a lot of these studies and research. Um, um, there's a lot of analysis that we do because we're all analysts. Um, so a lot of analysis, a lot of frameworks that we come up with to serve the digital and, and analytics industry overall. Oh, wow. Uh, that's uh, amazing. And I uh, thank you so much for your time, for the amazing work you are doing. And I know also how much you are supporting women in TED and how much you are collaborating in every panel that is taking place in the Middle East. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Andrea. It's my pleasure to participate in this and uh, support all these great causes. Thank you so much.